It's uh, AFR Talk and AFA Today, live from the belly of the news beast in uh, lower Manhattan, the shadow of the Freedom Tower. Literally, we're in the shadow. It casts such a big sh- uh, t- shadow. We, we Almost anywhere in lower Manhattan, you're in its shadow. But we are just north of the Trinity Church, and looking down, uh, you can see the Trinity Church Historic Cemetery from where we are. Uh, every day, uh, I'm reminded of the founders that uh, are buried there and kind of uh, how important uh, that church uh, and uh, their association with our, our nation and this city uh, mean, especially when you see uh, the local government of New York City and the direction it's headed now, uh, very, very much in a different direction. Uh, I was just uh, checking news headlines during the break, and uh, man, I don't know how you deal with it. How do you deal with this? We have a president who doesn't go to his security briefing on Saturday to deal with a growing reality that there's probably going to be war between the Ukraine and Russia. I mean, we've already got uh, Russian occupancy basically taking place in in sections of the Ukraine, and the leaders uh, scrambling jets and so forth to try to prevent that from happening. But then you you run into this little bit of news. Uh, This is uh, from Bloomberg News. When Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visits the White House tomorrow, President Obama will tell him that his country could face a bleak future, one of international isolation and demographic disaster, if Netanyahu refuses to endorse a U.S.-drafted framework agreement for peace with the Palestinians. Obama will warn Netanyahu that time is running out for Israel as a Jewish, de- uh, Jewish majority democracy, and the president will make the case that Netanyahu alone among Israelis has the strength and political credibility to lead his people away from the precipice. In an hour-long interview Thursday in the Oval Office, Obama, borrowing from the Jewish sage Rabbi uh, Hill, uh, Hillel, uh, told Jeffrey Goldberg, the author of this article, that his message to Netanyahu will be this, if not now, when, and if not you, Mr. Prime Minister, then who? He then took a sharper tone, saying that if Netanyahu does not believe that a peace deal with the Palestinians is the right thing to do for Israel, then he needs to articulate an alternative approach. It's hard to come up with one that's plausible, said Obama. So Obama is ready to talk very, very tough and mean, uh, warn of international isolationism, warn of um, time running out and uh, so forth. If Netanyahu doesn't come to the table and and accept an Obama-drafted U.S. peace plan, uh, that he will that uh, that bad things will happen. That's 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 the warning. Yet, uh, on the other side of that. Uh, we're not talking tough at all to a nation that has a warship just off our shores. It's kind of a surreal day, don't you think? We're threatening our allies and we're ignoring our enemies? Or is that too simplified? 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, Scott in Ohio next. Hi, Scott. Welcome. You're on with Calvin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hey, God bless you, Kevin. Thank you. I listen every day. Thank you, sir. Hey, uh, the the thing that I'm wondering is, uh, I think it's kind of ironic that uh, we're shrinking our military when all this is going on. Hmm. You're not the first person that has brought that up. And, uh, you know, Secretary of Defense Hagel on Sunday, who announced all the cuts last week, uh, tried to come back yesterday on some of the news shows and say, hey, but this isn't my fault. This is all. Uh, this is all from sequester. This is all from uh, budget cuts. This is all from stuff I had no control over. But you're right. We're we're going to stop production of uh, uh, as many uh, war machinery. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna close down some bases. We're gonna we're gonna stop flying some planes, and we're gonna build less ships. Uh, your concern about that is that we just won't be able to have the response mechanisms in place if uh, something does threaten one of our interests. Right. That's a pretty real concern. Scott, thanks for the call. Uh, 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, Margaret in Texas. Hi, Margaret. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for taking my call, and God bless you for informing the country. Thank you. I just wanted to make a comment that several other callers before me have made. I think it's appalling that Obama did not attend the meeting on Saturday that he should have, considering the fact that we have a warship 200 miles off of our coast, 
not only that, but as other people have said, he's decreased the military, in turn weakening our country. To me, this is just all a part of his agenda in destroying our country. I think that's been his. Uh, I think that's been his goal ever since he first took office, um, with the many abortions, with the uh, gay rights that he's been standing behind, the fact that he has severed ties, as far as I can tell, with uh, Israel rather than keeping them as allies. To me, he has severed that friendship, from what I can tell. I just think that all around he's doing everything he can to destroy us, not just economically, but otherwise. As a well, and it's it's interesting you say that, Margaret, because I got into uh, I got into a discussion over the weekend with somebody uh, who wanted to um, take exception with the, uh, the 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 term that you just expressed. You know that he's trying to take down the country or destroy the country, and they're like, Kev, can't we just disagree and say he just simply has a different vision for where the country needs to go? And I understand why why secularists and particularly leftists want to make that argument because to the, to them there is no morally superior governing system. You know, um, socialism is just different than free markets, and uh, we it's not necessarily more moral or less moral. It's just different, and we really haven't ever really tried it the right way yet. That's their argument. It hasn't been done the right way yet. It's not that it can't be done. It's that we haven't done it the right way yet. And I'm sitting here going, uh, that's why you on the left and, and secularists and atheists, you, you don't see uh, what people that have a moral viewpoint do perceive, and that is that we are destroying the country. Uh, I, I wrote my syndicated weekend column uh, this weekend, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be at onenewsnow.com uh, by the end of the day. But uh, I talk about how in the last uh, three, uh, the last four years, uh, we have we have given Planned Parenthood in excess of about a billion and a half dollars. Taxpayers have. Out of money that we've earned and that we call ours, we've given them about a billion and a half dollars. Uh, out of those funds and resources and programs, they have had the capacity to do whatever they do, but in the midst of doing whatever they do, they have committed over $1.2 million abortions. Now, when you think about this from just a pragmatic standpoint, if you are a nanny state with big budgets and big government control of things, what do you need? You need workers who are going to pay into the system. But when you when you believe that there is no moral difference on whether you have a child or you abort a child, and so you encourage abortion, especially if it's a money-making thing, uh, when, when you go down that road, all of a sudden, you have a deficiency in the number of people necessary to keep the big nanny state afloat. So it's not even uh, abortion's not even good for for leftism, for central control. But people that see the difference between the two worldviews are going to say, "Well, this is not only morally inferior to this other worldview, but it's fiscally inferior to the other worldview because you're losing." The, uh, the revenue generation that you need in order to keep that afloat. And when I said this back to the person, I hadn't really thought about it that way. Wow. 888 589 What we're talking about specifically is that the president has, uh, he, he basically took the weekend off. And their national security team got together and met, and then he was updated by Dr. Susan Rice after the meeting took place. He then was on the phone with Putin for about 90 minutes sometime on Saturday in which uh, he more or less got no conditions at all. Putin just basically said, look, uh, we're just protecting the Russian-speaking people of Crimea. Now, we don't know that the Russian speakers of Crimea are in any jeopardy. They are ethnically um, and culturally and citizen residency wise, they are Ukrainians. They just happen to speak Russian. That happens to be, it's like uh, Canadians that speak French. They live in Canada, but that doesn't make them French. But that's the excuse that uh, Putin made for sending in um, a few thousand troops over the weekend. And now there's more on the way and there's more that will be establishing kind of a perimeter, not allowing uh, Ukraine to have access to that uh, area. And the Ukrainian soldiers that are inside that area are already 
under lock and key. Add to that the fact that Putin is a former KGB agent. He's dreamed of a long time of putting the Russian Federation back together in a way that kind of formulated the old Soviet footprint. And somehow, I don't know if it was during the Olympics or when, but somehow a Russian warship showed up on the shores of America. 888-589-8840. Does any of that matter? Uh, some people are just like, no, don't even, don't even bring up uh, the, the issue of, of military security or accountability or anything like that because uh, we, we have no patience for it. We are too fatigued from the wars we've been fighting. Uh, Matthew is in Mississippi. Hi, Matthew. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. What are your thoughts? Hey, Kevin. Uh, thank you for having my call. I just want to first say uh, thank you for being violent for the kingdom of God and just really amplifying the truth and obliterating mm. um, all confusion. Um, my opinion on this is, uh, we really need to watch and pray uh, for the president because we have this guy that is in office that is just destroying our country in every way. It is he is pretending to uh, to, to be a certain person of, uh, and say certain things, but really in the inside it's it's nothing but dark. And man, I, I don't really know what to say, but I. I just, uh, with the, the, the whole thing with Russia and everything, I, I, we have to watch that so closely because something is not going right. Something really fishy is going on, and I, I don't know what it is. I pray that God will just reveal it to us. Well, and that's a, that's a good point to, to bring up, and not just from a pure geopolitical standpoint, but from a theological viewpoint. Uh, if what they are saying uh, at Sky News is, is true today, if Russia is saying that they have China on board with them, uh, a Chinese-Russian nexus plays into Revelation. How? Th- there's there's some other there's some other elements at work here that modern times and people don't don't know that they should follow or read or look into. But a Russian-Chinese access or or partnership or alliance um, that could be something significant. Uh, 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, Joe also in Texas. Hi, Joe. Welcome. You're next. Hey, Kevin. Uh, yeah. Nice talking to you. Uh, Thank what you. they need to do is get the NSA uh, to surveillance those guys instead of surveilling the American citizens. And that's my comment, sir. Have a good day. Uh, the, the survey the Russians? Okay. I don't know where he went. Uh, let's try June in uh, Arkansas. Hi, June. You're next with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're Kevin. here. Yeah, uh, I'm enjoying the conversation. Yes, what you were just talking about, about uh, this tying into the book of Revelation, is a Mm -hmm. huge thing. Mm -hmm. And we in our church have been talking about this for quite some time. But with Mr. Obama, he's he's just, he's going to get away with what he's going to get away with. I don't agree with it. He should have been impeached months ago for uh, overstepping his bounds constitutionally. And... um, the people in this country, the young people who should be engaged about what's happening, are more uh, into what's happening with the Kardashians than what they are their own country. And for one who lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis, the thoughts of uh, a Russian ship off our coast is very significant. <laughs> Where do they come off of this? And they don't even say anything about it except on Fox. Well, barely, barely any coverage uh, on any of the major networks this weekend dealt with this, and uh, you know you've got you've got a fairly aggressive and uh, you know pretty pretty easy to read kind of guy in Putin. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't really mince words about what his desires are. Did well, we lose? The war's uh, in control, so we that I do believe. Prepare. That I do believe completely. But uh, yeah, it's it's important for us to pay attention and to be informed which is what we hope to do every day on this broadcast. Uh, it's a three-step process. It's obliterating the confusion. It's amplifying the truth. And then it's pursuing clarity. And as we do those three things, uh, the desire becomes uh, that we will uh, have uh, more sharpened thinking to be able to react and to respond to the issues that are in life around us with. Uh, let me go to uh, Mac in Georgia. Mac, you may be our last voice on this today. Hi. Good. Good evening. I'm glad to be able to talk with you. Sure thing. I think we need to get off Obama and just say it's the Democrats. Uh, well, but uh, you know, he's the one that didn't go to his meeting this Saturday. That everything should fall on them. But but Mac, it was the president specifically that didn't go to the meeting this Saturday. I mean, he, you've got a 
you, we've got to hold accountable the, the, the man that's leading that, that side. Hold that accountable to him? I'm sorry, say that again? Shouldn't the Democrats, his party, hold that accountable to him? Well, he kind of runs the party, though. I mean, he's the top elected Democrat in the country. So, you know, as he goes, the party will go. And, uh, friends, it just it brings me back to the reality of where we started the show at today. Uh, every Monday for the duration of 2014, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to encourage you to pray. We're going to say, uh, let's focus on prayer. Uh, today's prayer focus, as authored by Jim Cimbala and uh, available at pray2014.com, pray2014.com, focusing on trusting God uh, through the good, through the bad, through the up, through the down, through the, through the better for the worse, uh, but maintaining the trust in the one that not only created you, but knows you better than anybody else, knows where your weaknesses are, knows what your struggles are, knows exactly how far uh, you are able to, uh, to, to, you know, um, to take you with the trials and tests that, that come your way. If we are desiring to see change happen in the world, we need to labor in prayer at least to the same degree that we get angry or, or anxious about the things that are going on around us. And so I want to encourage you, be part of the solution. Be praying. Pray2014.com. Get the prayer focus every Monday. Weave that focus into your prayer life throughout the entire week. While you're there, you can also see where people have put their prayer requests. Pray for them. Leave a request of your own. But let's become a community of, of praying people that have at the heart of what we want from God, His will for our lives, for our families, and for our nation. I don't think we can go wrong doing that. Do you? All right. Uh, I'm Calvin McCullough. This has been AFA Today on AFR Talk. You know Brian Fisher's next in Focal Point, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. The views and opinions expressed in-